I'm Scott Walker and this is Walks on the Wild Side. In today's video I'm going to show you how I find and photograph rabbits. Welcome back to Walks on the Wild Side. Sorry it's been such a long time since the last video, but in this crazy year we've all had, other things have taken priority. But I'm back now and planning to put out videos on a more regular basis. For this first video back, I thought it'd be great to photograph some rabbits because their populations started to explode. They should be a couple of litters in now to the breeding season, so it's a great time to photograph them. I was last at this location back in March on a frosty morning and on that day we would got a fairly thick covering of high cloud and that led to a lot of soft light with muted colours which was really nice but I decided when I came back I wanted it to be on a clear day and we're forecast tomorrow for a morning with almost no cloud. So let's talk about rabbits. The female is called a doe and the male is called a buck, the same as most deer species like fallow deer and roe deer. And the babies they have are unusually called kittens. Now a mating pair can have three to seven litters in one breeding season and up to eight kittens in one litter. So that means a single breeding pair of rabbits can produce up to 56 kittens in one year. So thus the phrase breeding like rabbits. Now, rabbits aren't indigenous to the UK, but they have been here an awfully long time. The Romans first brought them to Britain, but their population didn't particularly catch on. There's evidence that some survived in certain pockets of England, but they really took off when the Normans came here. And the Normans loved rabbits for their food and their fur, so they used to both farm and hunt them, which left many, many rabbits in the wild. So rabbits have populated almost all of England and Wales for about 800 years and they cover most of Scotland and Ireland now as well. There's just some of the islands that surround Great Britain that don't have rabbits. Rabbits are crepuscular animals. That means they're most busy first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening. Now that doesn't mean to say that you won't see them during the day, but they're most busy in the couple of hours after sunrise and the couple of hours before sunset. Rabbits are social creatures, so you'll find that they live alongside each other and eat together very often. So where you find one, there's usually more. And very often with rabbits, you'll find that there are domesticated pet rabbits that are mixed in amongst the wild population. And that's often because pet animals escape and they will seek out a population of wild rabbits to socialise with, to live alongside. Now, most of what you'll see rabbits doing is eating. They eat a lot of grass. So there's absolutely no need to bring any food, certainly no lettuce and definitely no carrots. Bugs Bunny has got a lot to answer for. Rabbits do not eat carrots and carrots are bad for them. So don't try baiting rabbits at all. You don't need it. They've got all the food that they need surrounding them with all this grass. When rabbits are happy, you'll see them do a move that's called a binky. And they basically jump up into the air and kick their legs to one side. And it's one of the cutest things that you'll see in the whole animal kingdom. So let's go and find some rabbits. So one of the first things to look for when finding rabbits is droppings. Now rabbits can't digest all the food they eat. So they will lay their droppings somewhere near to where they live and go back and eat it again. So near to their home, you'll find these soft squidgy droppings, really quite close, you know, probably within a couple of hundred meters. But a little bit further away, you're gonna see these harder droppings that aren't useful to the rabbits because they can't eat them again. So the next thing to look for is the rabbit's home. Now, rabbits dig holes in the ground about two meters long called a burrow. And as we've already discussed, they're social creatures. So they link their burrows up underground into a network called a warren. And rabbits are never gonna be far from the warren. 
So you want to look for holes in the ground such as these, or perhaps holes in mud banks or grass banks like these, or even holes under trees and bushes where they get a little bit of protection from predators and the elements. And the final thing to look out for is rabbit trails. So rabbits follow the same paths all the time through long grasses and through bracken that lead them away from and back to their warren. Now, if you can find rabbit trails like these and you know where a warren is, you're likely to know where the rabbits are going to emerge from so that you can be there hidden and prepared and ready to take their photograph. So now we've found our rabbits, we know where they're going to be. I want to do a little bit of thinking about what I need to do tomorrow. So the first thing to say is you don't need to be camouflaged to photograph rabbits. If you wear dark clothes and you get down low, you'll find that they come quite close to you. The biggest thing that's going to be a problem is probably dog walkers. So where this location is, we get a lot of dog walkers here. Now at the time of the morning that the sun's rising, we won't get many, but maybe after I've been here an hour or so, some will start to come. And as soon as the rabbits see the dog, they run. Now that can be okay because it provides you the opportunity to move around. You can get into a different position and change things up a little bit. But if you get too many dog walkers, you're not gonna get much time with the rabbits. Now the next thing to think about is the sunlight, which direction it's gonna come from. And I use this app called Photo Pills, which you can see here. It gives you an augmented reality picture of where the sun is going to emerge on the horizon and uh, the times that it's going to be in golden hour and when it moves into normal daylight. So that allows you to have a bit of a think about where you want to be. So I know if I want to get some nice side light, I can shoot in this area just behind me. There's some long grasses, I can blur things out a little bit, that will be quite good. Or if I want to get backlighting, I can go over there because the sun will be almost directly behind the rabbits. And I think that's probably where I'm gonna to start tomorrow. So I'm gonna come back in the morning and I'm gonna to aim to be in place by maybe about 20 minutes before sunrise. And there'll probably be about another 15 minutes or so after sunrise when we're still not getting any direct light because of the trees on the horizon. So that gives me, you know, a little bit over half an hour in which to just stay still and allow the rabbits to come out and hopefully get near to me. So I'll catch up with you in the morning. So it's about 4 a.m. and I'm on my way back to photograph the rabbits that we saw yesterday. Now, it's gonna be a pretty clear morning. The forecast looks pretty good, but we've had rain overnight, so the ground's gonna be damp and there's a little bit of fog hanging over some of the fields, a little bit of mist. Um, so I might need to wait for that to clear, but because we're gonna have fairly clear skies, my plan is to get myself into a position where we can get some backlit photos to start with, maybe some silhouettes, things like that. So let's go.
coat has been great so far. There's a couple of things I've noticed. One, the rain. Although I'm soaked to the skin and probably caked in mud and grass, actually the rain has really helped because there's parts of the photos where the light is just glistening off the grass and that's really making a difference. Another thing, the dog walkers have started to come out and far from being the problem that I normally think they are for me, I've noticed a difference in the rabbit's behaviour. What they're doing is running to the edge of the field and hiding in the bushes and the trees that surround it. And they'll wait and watch and just look to see if that dog walker comes towards them. And if it doesn't, they'll come back out pretty quickly and start eating again. Now that provides me an opportunity because if I can get a photo of a rabbit in those bushes with some light shining on it, I can get some quite nice high contrast pictures. So I'm going to try for a few of those whilst we've still got a little bit of this golden morning sunlight left. just come across an unfortunate thing I found a dead baby rabbit now it is unfortunate it looks like uh, a fox or maybe another predator got hold of it started to eat it and perhaps got interrupted and couldn't finish it off so I sat to one side and waited around a little while because I was sure something would come along and soon enough a pair of carrion crows turned up and started tearing apart the carcass now, I have taken some photos of this and I will put them in the video, uh, but if you're squeamish, don't worry. I've done it in such a way that you can't see the rabbit's carcass. Now, the reason I took these photos is because it is a reality of rabbits' lives. 90% of them don't make it through the first year. And that's why rabbits need to breed like rabbits and have such a big population. Because if they don't, the population dies away. Now the oldest rabbit lived to be 18 years, but most of them do die in the first year and they end up back in the animal food chain and carrion crows need to eat just as much as any other creature. So we're into normal daylight now and I'm gonna keep going because the rabbits seem really busy today. I'm gonna to position myself in some of the longer grass just behind me and I'm gonna use that for different effects to blur out different amounts of foreground and background. And if you've never done this before, try it. Find yourself some long grass, lie in it, photograph whatever comes along, birds or rabbits or whatever it might be, and change your position, move around a little bit, try different clumps of grass in front of your lens and see what effects you can come up with. Now, you can vary all sorts of things, and if you're smart enough, even to the extent where you could blur out everything in the picture, apart from your subject. So, it's a really useful skill to try. Well, it's now nearly eight o'clock and I'm cold and I'm wet, but despite that, I've had a great time. I'm really pleased with how some of the photos today turned out, um, but I'm gonna head home, grab a bowl of porridge and a cup of coffee. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you get notified next time I put out a video, which will be much sooner than the last one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.